Happy summer, everybody. It's Kirill, and you're tuned into Case Drama. It's the beat of your heart with the beat of the drums. <laughs> So this is our first solo episode. So I don't know how this is going to go. Should I look at you? I don't know. This is kind of confusing to me. But it is summer. I mean, if you can tell, the sweat is happening. I'm loving the summer. I was making a reel of my summer highlights just the other day. And I was thinking, man, I love this summer. It is a little too hot. And I have finally learned about UV index. So please, please do yourselves a favor. Put on that sunblock. Bring a million hats when you travel. I'm sorry if you just have one hat. Bring that hat. And um, please stay away from the sun. Your eyes are also important. And this is the part I didn't even know about. You have to wear shades. Hindi lang siya pang forma. It actually protects your eyes from the very dangerous sun. So please do that. And drink lots of water. Stay hydrated. And enjoy the summer. I love the summer fruits also. I've been hanging out with people and sharing my giant mangoes from Pampanga. And um, my Ninang just sent me fruits from her farm. Like pineapples. Ay, nako. Ito yung maganda about living in a tropical country. You really have the best fruits. And I have been traveling a lot lately. And that's why I just wanted to share some travel tips for solo travelers. I believe that it is a trend right now. If you've never traveled solo, I don't want to be the one to encourage you because that's a decision you have to get to on your own. If you're not comfortable, try a baby step. Go to the coffee shop by yourself. Sit there by yourself and maybe that's step one. I'm not going to force you to go to another place like Baguio City. Check out Cozy Cove or have a picnic in the park but you know those are probably the next logical steps and then maybe to go to another country this year alone i went to london by myself and from london i traveled to paris on a train it was like an hour or two hours away by myself i never post this on social media as it happens because it's just not safe. And I am praning, um, which means I watch my back. So I'm very, very careful about these things. But I would want to share the joys of solo travel with you because it's something you should experience once in your life. I do not drive, which is something my husband Yael Yuzon hates because women should drive. Anyone should drive. So yeah, I'm trying to get there. But seguro the most... I could do is to travel by myself. Siguro my confidence built up through the years because my first solo travel experiences was go um, going to Las Vegas. And then once I get to Las Vegas, I have a house full of family members there. But just the idea of boarding a plane by yourself is pretty empowering. And knowing that I could do that um, in my 20s and 30s, but I felt pretty badass about that. And... Maybe one of the first reality checks was when I woke up and somebody said to me, Ang sarap naman ng tulog mo. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, this is the downside to solo travel. Parang when you're sleeping and you think you're in your safe space, in your seat, somebody is your new friend, like super close because they were watching you sleep. The whole way. So that's Manila to LA. Diba? Parang, oh, hi, new friend. I guess we kind of slept together. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was a wake-up call to what solo travel could be like if you're not completely aware or careful about your surroundings. I mean, I'm sure he kind of meant it in the best way. Na, oh, it was a peaceful sleep. I watched you. <laughs> but diba? parang... Ooh, ganun pala yun. So there are do's and don'ts. There are pluses and minus to solo travel. And of course, um, if it's your first time doing it, it's easy to get lost. And if you're not okay with that, try to travel with some friends first and then build up the confidence. Maybe do a day alone, like a solo day when you go to a new country. But it's always so exciting to explore Comment, send us comments and questions like if you if you have like curiosities about what it's like for the first time or shampere with different countries. I mean, I haven't been to all the countries, but um, to the ones I've been to, 
there's always something great to discover. It's it's hard when you're alone because you're always watching your back. So I have a few countries that I really, really feel safe in. And I think number one would be Singapore. So I worked in Singapore for four months and we've tackled this with Christian Bautista because we did the Kitchen Musical together. And after that one time, I was able to do several other shows in that country. So I think A really safe country like Singapore is a good place to start because you can take the train late at night by yourself. And there are so many um, different transpo modes. You just have to download apps. You have to know how the place works, for example. So in Singapore, for example, one of the questions I got asked a lot by locals was, why do Filipinos like to enter the train and stay by the door? So um, travel tips, (laughs) there is such a thing as first in, last out. So if you're going to ride a bus or a train, make sure to board the very end because that's where you're supposed to go for a good flow of the traffic inside the transport, which is the bus or the train, um, where the seats aren't assigned like the airplane. So first in, last out. Don't be by the door because you want to be the first one to go out. Okay, if your stop is the next stop, still make sure that you are not right by the door, but fairly near it. Um, Another thing I would like to share about riding public transport, for example, in Singapore, is that you're not supposed to talk super loudly. I know we love to express ourselves and enjoy life, but in public transport, In some countries, they're very, very strict about keeping it down. So if you're wondering why people are wearing their headphones and not talking on the phone, it's because it's their way of respecting the other people in the space. And I guess with COVID-19, we realize that talking actually like we're like sharing germs with the rest of the world. So I guess that's another way they respect the space of everybody, especially when it's very crowded. So that was another question I was getting asked. When I was working in Singapore, why do Filipinos like to talk so loud in the train? So I was like, in my head, bakit bawal ba? I didn't really know because I, at that point, I, I didn't know about the do's and don'ts when you ride public transportation. So it would be good to know or to know it and that let's just be quiet on the train. I know we love to take um, photos, do TikToks <laughs> on the train or like hang and pose and use the bars as um, pole dancing bars. <laughs> but, diba, um, makibagay tayo sa lugar. Let's look around. I mean, I'm sharing this because I had no idea about these rules because who writes them down, diba? These are the things that they grew up knowing. These are things that are very, very natural to them. So another thing um, I learned by experience, I entered a bus and I didn't know how it was going to go. I thought the the way that it was going is also going back. But I, I just did not study how the bus was going to work. So I got very lost. I called my friend for help. And the way she dealt with me being lost was to say, the bus will stop in a train stop. So when the bus stops in a train stop, that's where you get off. And of course, you tap your card when you get off the bus. So I was so nervous. I got a bag of chips and I started stress eating. I enter the train. I'm eating my chips. I'm so stressed. And then I start to notice that people are looking at me. So I felt really beautiful. So I was like, what is it with my makeup today? They're all looking at me. And I look above and I see a sign and it says, no eating <laughs> allowed. And this happened again, still in Singapore. So I was like, well, they must have noticed that I was completely lost and not from there. So I wasn't fine. So if you're watching this now, please don't find me. I was just really confused and I didn't know all the rules at the moment. But of course, when I saw the sign, I stopped eating the chips immediately. So now I know. Plus another thing, I was by the door. So two mistakes already but uh, recently I did go on a bus and it was actually quite cheap and quite efficient so I took a long walk with my director from Kitchen Musical and I was like oh it's pretty easy to go on the bus and pretty safe and I was so proud because I saw some Filipinos on the bus 
And my Singaporean director was like, wow, you're so famous. People know you and the boss. And I was just like, hey. <laughs> so shout out to all the Filipinos um, in Singapore that we hung out with. Another perk of solo travel, for me at least, um, I did see a group of Filipinas, although I was lost at the moment in a, in a hurry. One of the sweetest, most confusing things happened to me. I, I spoke about UV index earlier and in Singapore, they take it very seriously because they know how the sun can damage your skin and cause all these sicknesses. And a lady gave me a red umbrella and I was so confused and I didn't have any more space in my bag. So I said, um, I, I, Thank you, but I can't take this umbrella because I don't know what to do with it. And I didn't know why it was necessary to have it. So I guess also those little run-ins with people, it gives them the opportunity to, to say hi to you and show you how they care because they knew I was alone <laughs> and lost and probably not protecting myself from the sun. So it's one of those safe run-ins with fellow Filipinos. I think we will find Filipinos anywhere we go in the world and they are very, very caring. And um, they will surprise you just with the amount of joy they have that you're there. They actually invited me to hang out with them. So I go, but I'm late for something. But yeah, so shout out to all the Filipinos that I saw in Singapore. Um, solo travel can be solo, but you will run into a lot of kababayans. And I think we have this code word, kabayan. When you're trying to figure out if they are Filipino or not, you can say ate or salamat po or thank you po. It just um, slip in a word here and there to see if they are open to acknowledging that they are a fellow Filipino. So there are those beautiful moments. And I I don't say this because um, I'm somebody they see on Showtime, but I I know that other people do this as well because I was in a bus one time and my friend behind me was talking to another fellow Filipino beside her and I was just listening in on their conversation Sabiko, any Filipino talaga will spot another Filipino and just like give them travel tips don't go here mahal dyan. so a lot of them are very very generous with all their tips and secret spots in a place so um, if you're open to it try to figure out who is your kabayan or kababayan in your general area. So, um, yeah. So that's Singapore. One of the safest places to go to. When I went to London, I have to admit that I was a little more scared because it was a long flight and I didn't know how to get to the hotel. So I I have to admit that when I got to the airport, I was really nervous. And I think that's okay. Again, I saw some fellow Filipinos who just made me feel like, oh, hi, welcome. <laughs> welcome to London. And siempre, you're trying not to seem like a first-time traveler. Um, some people are very, very much afraid of immigration. So make sure that you have all your papers with you and just remember that you are not a criminal and just relax. Um, some people have ways of dealing with this. Um, I've heard people say, wear your best jewelry. Um, maybe a good thing, maybe not. But try to dress decently. Like, don't go in there with tattered clothes. Try to have like a nice blazer. Just if that helps you present yourself better, why not? Because you want to appear like a serious traveler. Right? So some people are super casual because they want to go to the beach. If there is an immigration... Um, booth that you have to pass. Maybe it's not the best idea to look super casual because, you know, they are still trying to figure out who you are. And I feel like if you're confident about yourself, then you don't need all that jewelry in a man. Just wear a nice blazer. Um, don't wear your short shorts yet. Save that for the beach if you're going to the beach. So that's another tip. I wouldn't advise on the jewelry because when you are traveling by yourself, you would have to put things in a safe. I was talking about this with a friend and are safes even safe? Because people have said that they've lost things in hotel safes. So for that friend of mine, your advice niya is to still carry your passport with you at all times. Because once it's lost, that's it. I mean, you'd have to go to the embassy and retrieve it. And if you're solo… 
that could be very, very difficult and you would panic. And some people cannot panic and be effective at the same time and just chill out. And who are you going to call? Your mom, your dad. They have to fly to wherever you are. That defeats the purpose of the independent solo travel experience. So put your passport in a safe space, which is somewhere in your person. Bahala ka na kung saan. <laughs> um, have a bag with you. I prefer to put a Ziploc because I always have cologne in my bag and that could immediately kill my passport. I don't know if anyone still does traveler's checks. Back in the day, there was a thing as a traveler's check so that if you lost it, then you could somehow retrieve your money. But now I think the best way to go is to have a nice credit card with um, good exchange rates. And I don't know how you're going to get that, but you got, you have to figure it out. Um, a lot of people do digital money, so you don't even need the the cards for the transpo because everything just works with your cards on your phone also. So try to look into that. What else? With money, some people just exchange enough money at the airport just so they make sure that they don't have to find another spot and, you know, bring out your cash because at least at the airport there are a lot of security cameras and you're pretty much still in a safe space so what else yeah the fear is real when you're traveling solo um so give yourself a bathroom break if you need to and just like try to collect yourself with your baggage with you inside the toilet it's it's hard to leave it outside i've had those moments when i'm inside by myself and then is my bag still there? Is my bag still there? So if you cannot or if you're traveling too heavy, like I am not a travel light kind of a person. But when I do travel alone, I just have one backpack and one big bag. Try to travel as light as you can. Because when you have to go to the toilet and you have all those things with you, parang it's impossible. And it's just hard to lug it around by yourself. And once you ask somebody for help, you don't know if they've targeted you. I'm such a negative thinker. But yeah, <laughs> um, you never know if there's an enemy around, diba? Um, Another thing, because you are solo, some people are very wise to give a pin to somebody. So give it to somebody you trust and somebody who's not going to be so nervous about having to track you. Because if you give it to a parent also, I mean, how's that? You're going to make them nervous your whole trip. And they, you might as well have just taken them along with you. So know your emergency numbers. I guess I cheat my solo travel because I meet up with people. Um, but it's also an excuse to make sure that you are in touch with your friends abroad. So meetups are important. And I think like if you are already at that level, sleep over at a friend's house. Um, I did a solo trip to New York. Yael followed a couple of days later, but it was still a solo trip. So yay me. Um, I stayed with a friend, Jenny Santi, and we watched some plays together. And I feel... This is important to do because it's a way to really bond with somebody you're close with, but you know that you can get closer with. So she was always like, oh, stay at my house, stay at my place and let's go to the park, Central Park. Let's go so watch some plays together. I think... It takes you out of your comfort zone. Uh, your only casual friends or friends who meet up once in a while. So you also get to see their world. But I'm I'm sure not everyone has this privilege or, you know, just the opportunity to really get to know people in their own space. But some people are comfortable with it. Actually, she has other friends who stay there. Ella Pangilina, for example, and Hannah. I know they stay at her apartment. So I go, wow, ang galing naman yung ganong classing friendship. I guess some people are just so open to sharing their homes with other people, especially when you're in a beautiful place like New York, wherein it's so rich in culture that you want people to experience it as much as you do. Um, and there's nothing better than sharing the world that you know, especially coming from a country like the Philippines and suddenly being open to all the arts and culture in a place like New York, it's not something you want to keep to yourself, right? 
So there are people like that. And those are great friends to have as well. Shout out to you, Jenny. Um, she is a best-selling author and, of course, now a painter. So I even went to her painting school. So parang sabi ko, ang galing naman. I saw the new book that she's working on. So it's a great way to connect and bond. So solo travel could help you do that because now, because of budget constraints, <laughs> I get to hang out with a friend, which, alam mo yan, parang I have no choice but to really like muster up the courage to say, can I stay with you? And that just brought about uh, a world of experiences with her and seeing how cool she is and how tapang she is riding the subway. Um, we didn't get mugged, but we did get like these scary comments on the subway. And I was like, ang tapang mo naman, nakakatakot. But you know, seeing another woman like that, parang it also showed me that I could do this in the world. And this is you in New York. I mean, she's not originally a New Yorker as well. So I was like, okay, this is the level I have to get on. And I think it was nice being with her. It's not every day that I would have a situation like that where somebody is like <laughs> getting mad at me on the subway. <laughs> so we were speaking in Filipino and… The person actually said, go back to the country where you came from. And I was like, why did we speak in Filipino? I said, I didn't want to do this. But why can't I speak in Filipino? Diba? But I was so scared. Honestly, like, ugh, I don't know if I should share it. But you know, those are the experiences that are so real. And that's the reason why a lot of parents say, stay home na lang. The world is a dangerous place. But… Being with her and knowing that she was standing her ground, I honestly felt like this is the world we live in. We cannot be forced to stay indoors just because not everyone welcomes us. But, you know, you have to be courageous and just live in it. Speak Filipino if you want to because, you know, that's who we are. I mean, oh my God, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that moment. I was really scared. <laughs> I must have said scared 10 times. But overcoming that with her, oh gosh, that was a moment in my life I will never forget. That's why she's a best-selling author. That's why she is writing a new book. What an experience. And I wouldn't have experienced that had I been with Yael or with my family because… I would have been in a safe space, diba? And not trying new things. So these adventures do happen when you do solo travel. So it's a plus and a minus because some people, baka they would be traumatized by that moment, to be honest. But ako kasi, seeing how tapang she was, I was like, okay, we are <laughs> moving in this direction where we live in the world we have love in our hearts. We are not doing anything hateful towards anybody. We are just being ourselves. So as long as we are not harming anybody, which is not something we did, then we are still fine. But we have to exist the way we are. So this is me, a stronger woman after <laughs> that moment. So since I started with a scary moment in transport, in a transport um, vehicle, uh, I'll go to the next scary moment that I had in a transport vehicle, which was a ride share. So I was in a ride share. I'm there. I'm chatty because I'm chatty. As you know, you're watching case drama. So I'm chatting and oh, the driver, he, you know, he figured out that I'm Filipino with my cuentos, ganyan, ganyan. And then he talks about his daughter and how she likes nice things. And then I guess we talk about the Philippines and how there are Filipinos in the West End. So they're performing in the West End, etc. I'm in a car. Uh, my friend says not to take the train because she feels it might be more dangerous. And I'm thinking, there's nothing more dangerous than me sitting alone in a ride chair with a driver now talking about a massage and I know it's going to become somewhat a topic that is sexual. And it's just him and me, a total stranger. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do? The ride has to end. I can report 
him now. Or I don't know. But of course, I'm sending messages to a friend who's nearby. But also like, why didn't I just take the train? So there are instances when you think that public transport is dangerous. But also consider that if it's just you by yourself, a ride share, like as a solo traveler, might not be the safest um, option even though it gets you from point A to point B. Number one, it's expensive. Number two, the traffic in London was bad. And number three, I don't know how I was going to roll out of the car in case things got bad. But of course, it was just conversation. But of course, if you feel violated, then that's never right. And that quickly reminded me of another instance when I was in a taxi cab. And the conversation was similar So now I'm wondering, is this exclusive to me or have others experienced this? And I've always been curious about that. So do send us like a comment if you have experienced this as an Asian woman just because you're Asian. Well, I guess they just meant a massage with a happy ending. And I don't know why the conversation goes there when you are in a cab or a rideshare. I wish I reported it. I guess I could still report it. (laughs) I'm reporting it right now. (laughs) But yeah, those are just the strangest things that have happened to me. But nothing bad naman happened except for the conversations of massages with happy endings. So yeah, maybe public transport with other people may be a safer option rather than like, a solo ride in a small vehicle. Okay, let me just breathe. So know your options. Know where you're going. That's a good thing to do. Um, Walking is always another safe option. Honestly, when I was in London, I made a few mistakes with my bus rides. Also because even if I'm looking at my map, when the bus arrives, I take the wrong bus. So this has happened to me a bunch of times, but I get off on the next stop. I'm not afraid to get lost, but then because I'm trying to catch a play. So I did watch some plays by myself. I watched, where is it? Oh, here. I watched Guys and Dolls. So this is a play which is right by the London Bridge. And because... Uh, the London Bridge is quite old. I was thinking, Tumaan ba dito si Jack the Ripper? Which is probably not even correct. But I was like, am I safe? Am I safe? But dami naman din tao. I think walking is a safe, a safer bet. Especially because there are a lot of people naman. But one thing people did warn me about in London is that if you're holding your phone, somebody may take it like a bike rider could take it. So I was always very conscious about keeping my phone near me or like in a pocket and just checking it whenever I had to check it. So try to memorize the map naman before you walk and keep it away. Yeah, so in London naman, I watched Pacific Overtures with Joaquin Valdez. There's a Filipino actor. He was my teacher, musical theater teacher. A stages stages musical theater teacher oh my god i met the whole cast here joaquin valdez and i also met the co-actors like this is takuro ono and this was um at the chocolate factory theater and it was a very safe space like a safe area but because of the little little tunnels i was thinking in the alleyways i like Am I going to be okay? Is somebody going to take my phone? But yeah, it was very safe. But the kapraningan talaga sets in. Especially when you're late for the play and you're like, "Mm, do I run now? And I'll be like running. Looking probably like a crazy person. But I did it. (laughs) I'm alive. (laughs) There will be moments when you will get so scared you will run. But it's okay. Like I, I look back now and parang, can't believe I did that. Like I can't imagine my friends doing the same thing and I watched a bunch of plays by myself like I watched um, Stranger Things by myself and I watched I actually watched all those plays by myself so sabi ko um, in the daytime I attended uh, an ed tech conference but in the evening I would watch a play and it felt really good that I mixed my love for education in the morning and my love for theater in the evening and got a whole trip you know just 
doing all that by myself. It would have been hard to do that had I been with my husband or with my family. But I think I was able to really tick a lot of boxes of all the places that I wanted to go to. I even visited Shakespeare's um, theater. What is it called? The round, the round place. The round place. What is it called? Yes, Globe. Yeah. So I did go to the Globe Theater, but it was minutes before I had to take the train to Paris. Whoa. So I ran like at certain points and I didn't even get to finish the whole tour. But, you know, as a person who loves theater, I, I, I knew that I had to make like a little stop to say hi to Shakespeare. So I did visit the Globe Theater in a quick, a quick trip. But yeah, I, I guess those are the things that you can't do if you're in a group. Because it's just too much of a crazy schedule. But yeah, thinking about it now, parang I'm still nervous. And <laughs> I'm also kind of scared because now my dad's going to hear all this. And he's going to know like, oh, why did you do all that? That was dangerous. So yeah, sorry, dad. But you know, this big girl has to go and see the world. And sometimes it's not so safe, but the experiences were amazing. So I think we miss out when we fear the world too much because of the possibilities of the dangers. But I think awareness of what could happen gives you a good sandata. Parang you have a fighting chance and you can't stay stuck at home because you're afraid or you fear the unknown because you have to see bits and pieces of the world. I mean, standing in line with women from all over the world, for example, when I was in Guys and Dolls, I mean, even that, just knowing that everyone there has a shared love for the arts is already something. Talking to people who are watching Guys and Dolls. Guys and Dolls, for example, was a great place to see alone because it's an immersive standing experience. I don't know if you've ever heard of such a thing. I think because of the advent of AI, which is basically what my London ed tech conference was about, parang you could see how live theater tries to compare by giving you experiences that no computer could ever give you. So um, there are no photos of how the live experience goes, but we are all there on set with them. So you could even sit with them in the chairs, like in that, in that, on that table area. So you would actually be on the stage that goes up. And then the, the cast members look at you. So, and then everyone is just chatting with everyone. So I was like, wow, this is an experience like I've never, I've never had. I mean, I think we tried to do interactive experiences, but that one was like next level. And I must have spoken to like maybe 30 people from the standing audience because you're supposed to really interact and you're shepherded from one space to another. I don't even know how we didn't bump into the stage at any point. But yeah, that's one of the many great experiences that I had in that solo trip. What other experiences, Baba? People are used to it, Nay. Like seeing you walk by yourself. It's nothing unusual anymore to see people alone before. Because there was that idea that if you're alone, there's like a pity stare or something. But now it's just so normal. Especially if you feel like you're uncomfortable, then you can just always grab your phone, pretend you're vlogging, and then it'll be <laughs> work. Um, I always have a notebook. And a pen with me. That's why I did bring my pens and my notebooks. So I do have notebooks for each country. And then this is the binder for all those notebooks. Um, so this is like a theater notebook as well. I think. Wait, let me check. Oh yeah, but this is a Hong Kong notebook. Just to show you what's inside. Oh my gosh, this is so cute. Um, iron... Iron Fairy. So this is a place that Anne brought us to, Anne Curtis. Not that I'm name dropping or anything. <laughs> so yeah, um, just the dolls that I have on my bag. What else is here? I just like to put all the boarding pass. Oh yeah, Elle's birthday celebration. I just like to even put anything I'll uh, hear the stuff from Hong Kong Disneyland. I just try to glue everything together. 
your guide. Oh my gosh, I'm such a ano, keeper of basura. The map. So I try to keep as much basura as I can. But I think I did well with this birthday because I got everyone to sign on Yael's baby book. Yeah, so he has a baby book from Disneyland. Um, being the son of Elsa Yuzon, it, it made sense for him to be in Frozen, which is with Elsa and Anna. So I do also like to collect all the basura that I can gather here. Oh, from a trip to Osaka. Wait, let's see. <laughs> I think I've, I've started to keep journals for every country because... Um, then I can review the places I like since I don't really remember names so well. This is one of my favorite ones because this is a super lightweight paper one. So you could trace. Oh, but this is my Julie Jordan book. Do you buy your notebooks? No, I don't. Um, I don't buy the con uh, sorry. I don't buy the notebooks in the countries themselves. So I buy it in a nice paper store in in Shang Mall. Oh, this is one of the best places we went to, but this is not from a solo trip. So, yeah. So I think that's one nice tip. Um, my mom has a really heavy notebook that she brings with her, and that is not the most ideal thing if you're almost overweight. Another solo trip I took, of course, I, I mentioned, Kanina, that I went from London to Paris. And when I got to Paris, I did find uh, an old friend from college. And I saw her for a day. She was with her baby. We took a nice long, 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 long walk. So I, that's another thing. If you take a trip, be open to the long walks. Just wear the most comfortable shoes. I like to travel with my Ultra Boosts because I have scoliosis. So I can't even wear just flat shoes. That won't do for me. Stretch a lot. Yeah, check out our episode with Coach James because, you know, um, it's just one of those practical things that you need to do when you travel. And you don't want to have a backache the whole time or after. So, yeah, um, seeing the city is really best if you're in your jogging attire. I understand that it's not good for your Instagram, but you will be able to see more spots in the city that way. I did look for a place that was near my hotel in Paris. And I did end up in, I don't know how to pronounce it, Sacre Coeur, which was the best view ever. So the way I found it was I just looked for the nearest garden or park. And I went there, not knowing there were going to be hills. So I was walking and then running uphill, downhill. So I was like, I na lang naka jogging outfit. Ako. I was trying to see, parang, should I wear something fashionable or should I just wear my jogging pants and a jacket? And I went for jogging pants and jacket and buti na lang. So I guess um, that's another thing. Try to be as sporty as you can and bring fashionable sporty clothes so that your Instagram won't suffer. We don't want your follows to suffer. <laughs> but yeah, I was able to cover ground. And when I got to the church, the view was amazing. So do try to find places with great views and try to learn bits and pieces of the local language. I think I just spoke a bit of French and I found the best spots because people won't ignore you or they won't be rude to you if you at least give them a few French phrases. Like, try naman, diba? Because you're in their country. So they'll be friendlier with you. Or I don't know if they're just friendlier with me. If if you speak to them and try to just communicate. And then they will speak to you in English, trust me. Because they do know enough English if you know enough French. And if you, I guess, smile a little bit. <laughs> um, bonjour. Je m'appelle um, Karil. Je m'appelle, sorry, je m'appelle. Bonjour, je m'appelle Karil. <laughs> I wanted to say audio, but that's Korean. Audio. <laughs> je voudrais café, un café. Parang I would like something, something. I did have a great time there. And I, I honestly thought I was going to miss my flight because I was ready to stay. Um, I saw a bunch of Filipinos and I took their photo. Kaya lang, ito isa pang tip. Ask them muna if they want to do a jump shot. Because <laughs> the moment I got the camera, I was like, one, two, three, they jumped. 
I was like, ay, hindi ko alam, jump shots. So, nahiya ako kasi it was a group of 10 people and they'd all jump. Parang, was I supposed to know that you were gonna jump? Kasi Pilipino tayo. <laughs> so, if you're gonna um, ask people to take your… Kasi it's like that, diba? You'll do an exchange like, you want me to take your photo? I'll take your photo, then take mine later, diba? So, you're gonna do that exchange. But, as a jump shot ba to? Nah, that's that's my tip. <laughs> Sino pa ya ako? I want to. And they all jumped. So I missed it. Diba parang... <laughs> and then I couldn't ask them, do you want to do another jump shot? Because I knew I was going to miss it again. So I was just like, oh, jump shot pala. Mm. <laughs> parang fail ako sa pagka-Pilipino ko. But yeah, you could do that. You'll, you'll definitely see a group of Filipinos in a in a place like Sacre-Cœur or any other like tourist attraction. So just do the exchange X deal and then do the jump shot together. So yeah, I, I even saw them a little while later and they were having coffee and I, they were like, hey, come have coffee with us. And you know, I, I just really told them, I'm just, I, I had to stop and really say, I'm so glad that you get to take a vacation together. Some people kasi think like asking to take a picture is a complete nuisance. But for me, that very moment was such a beautiful day. I didn't know I was going to end up there. And I just was looking at them. So appreciate also what you see. Kasi like those things, we didn't have that for a long time. We, we couldn't travel with our family. So I was just looking at them. I was like, wow, this trip, is something else. Like, I'm sure you planned it for so long. And they were asking me to join them. I was like, oh, I wish I could stay, but I'm gonna miss my flight home. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think another thing is to open your eyes and appreciate what what there is in the world because we, we didn't have that for so long. So seeing them there also made me want to bring my whole family there. I, I was um, telling my mom, Parang, I would love to sit there with you in that cafe. Because I sat there for a good 15 minutes only. Sobrang bitin. But it made me think of who I wanted to bring there. And I think that's one of the things also that's nice about solo travel. You miss people. And it's good to miss them because you do realize that, oh, I want to appreciate our next trips together. Which sometimes you take for granted. So that's one of the good things about solo travel too. Oh my gosh, do I prefer traveling alone? I do love the group travel. Um, I had that with Yael on his 40th birthday. And we traveled with his band and um, his closest friends. And that was a different experience. It's also just harder to plan. But because we had such memorable moments and we made sure to take a lot of photos and do a lot of things together together like we ate we rode rides together um we did a filipino only challenge where we only spoke in filipino i mean we had all these little activities aside from just celebrating the birthday i think um i'm not as comfortable with it because it's such a big group and i didn't grow up just traveling with a barcada i missed a lot of college trips to Boracay, for example, or any beach. But doing it now uh, as an older person, parang ang saya rin talaga to know that you've kept so many friends through the years and that they are just so close to you. So, yeah, it's a, it's a different experience. The, I think I've shared enough scary <laughs> moments to say that I wouldn't do the solo travel too much, but I'm glad I've done it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, finding good deals. I mean, finding good deals is something my best friend does. Like, she'll tell me the prices and I'll be like, because of my work, I don't get to plan that far in advance. Like, I don't know exactly how to maximize some trips because I don't know the exact dates that I will be on break. So I can't plan that far ahead. I mean, it would be nice because it could save me some money. I have learned to join um, some memberships for hotels, for example, because then I can get free hotel stays, upgrades, etc. And I was like, oh, I should have done this sooner. So I think there are some of those deals that you could look into. Some deals are false deals because they feel like big discounts, but then they aren't exactly that. So you have to study the fine print, etc. But yeah, I feel like being a member of certain groups does help because the perks, just even the free coffee or the free drink, it's a lot. Or the early check-in because not all flights 
happen at a, at a convenient time. Um, early check in and late check out is actually quite the privilege. Um, I am very proud that I don't have to be a big planner. Like, I will get my recommendations, and people are always so excited to give recommendations on Facebook. So I love those because then I get to see where my friends have been and those who talk so passionately about one place. It's like, wow. I need to be there. Like you can feel like the excitement jumping off the page. I love that. I love that in our last trip to Vietnam, I knew I had to have coffee somewhere because they have great coffee. So yeah, Elle and I are walking. We tried to search coffee shops. We found a dinosaur cafe. Did not really serve coffee, but it was fun. It was great fun. Yeah, Elle had the best time with the dinosaurs. But we did find one coffee shop. I was like, I saw the tree. I saw the tiny seats. I saw the people. I was like, this is it. And it was the correct place to go to. We went there twice. It was that good. So I think um, knowing how to spot a vibe um, is also a, a skill that I've learned as a traveler. So I think that's one of the things that you need to know. But also, if you book a hotel in the correct area, then you're bound to find somewhere to go to that's just walking distance. I have this system. Whoa. <laughs> I have this system that I made because we went to one of those speakeasies, like the secret speakeasies. And this was like, Mm, say 15 years ago, probably something like that. I invited all my theater friends from Disneyland to go with Yael and I and our friends from Hong Kong. And, you know, we couldn't find the place. So I was like, yes, it's so cool. We can't even find the place. It was a stamp store. And this kind of thing was unheard of at that time. So we found it. We enter. Oh, it's like a cool place. We're in the cool place ordering the cool food. So tiny. We are so many. We're like 10 people. I was like, yeah, oh, did you check the bill? <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to be full. Like even if we order everything on the menu. So we quickly decided. And that's when I invented. Let's do a food hop. <laughs> a food crawl. So we went on to the pizza place, which was very much filling. Not the best pizza, but still, we were all so full at the end of it. So I think you just go for it. Like, you'll stumble upon it. It may or may not have good ratings. I never really rely on that. But you kind of figure it out once you're there. And then if you don't like it, just move on to the next. And that's fine. It doesn't have to be the best place. Um, it's just that some restaurants require you to order a certain amount of food and they don't really allow the hop. But I guess just be open to moving to a new place. Ooh, find yourself. I'm thinking if I'm thinking if I ever took one. Well, I did do an eat, pray, love moment, but that was really in Baguio. I was newly broken up and I went there, but I wasn't solo. So that's the closest I've had to an eat, pray, love moment. I want to say when I went to Bali, but I was already married when I went there. But because that felt like an eat, pray, love moment because you could really just be in the beach. And it feels really spiritual for some reason when you're there. Um, I was with two girlfriends, so that doesn't count as a solo trip. I did speak to a friend who said, well, Sam O. So she's on our radio show, Good Times. And she did speak of a solo trip that she did, but she had guides with her. So it didn't feel like a solo trip. So I don't know what would be a good solo trip for an eat, pray, love moment. Honestly, the Baguio trip was close to that because I was alone in my room most of the time. So it could count as a solo trip. I was praying a lot. So it was like, the religious version of Eat, Pray, Love. I don't know if I would recommend that to anyone. It was a lot of introspection and discomfort. It was not at all the way the movie shows, you know, how parang it felt adventurous. Mine felt like I was inside a small room. It was a convent. <laughs> parang my outfit was so 
eat three love. I was wearing a green sweater and brown pants and then Spartan slippers. You could really tell that I was freshly broken up. So if that were a movie, it wouldn't have been glamorous at all. I think a road trip would be good. Um, especially if you're broken up. You kind of want to be able to call for help the moment that you still want to be with your friends. Because if you are freshly broken up, I would imagine at a certain point, parang sumaklolo ka na lang sa mga friends mo. Kasi it's also nice to be around people you trust when that happens. And you should allow them to be there for you. You will have your alone time, but please also like make sure your friends can come to the rescue because you know that's something that you can allow them to do. But yeah, have like moments by yourself where you can walk around like in the beach, but I think it it wouldn't be the best time to be completely alone, especially if the breakup is fresh and a little too devastating. <laughs> now today <laughs> <You're> <laughs> to share the dangers and scares after otherwise no one will like let you go but i think it's allow yourself allow yourself to get lost one of the scary oh gosh another scary <laughs> moment i rode a train that you know sometimes trains split so i rode the wrong track so i again don't be in a hurry because you might end up lost and i was by myself in the whole train station so it was late at night after a play, so 11 p.m. Siguro, and I was like, this is scarier than me being scared of a person because I'm by myself. But also don't panic because I could go down and just find my way back to the train station where I got lost. So, I mean, don't panic. You will get lost. Hopefully not. So um, be wise with taking the train. It's better to miss the train than to get lost. So... <laughs> I always get lost because I'm rushing into the train because it arrives and I'm like, I didn't check properly. So don't be in a rush. Take your time and also just check the signs. <laughs> yeah, um, I've made a lot of mistakes. I've gotten lost so many times. I've panicked so many times. But that's life and that's the adventure. Allow yourselves to get lost. Allow yourselves to get scared. But also be very aware. Um, let people know where you are. and. Just when you get lost, you know, Yael and I always say it's adventure time because we try to make it exciting so that we're not defeated by the moment. And then you just take it in stride and then you find that there are so many beautiful surprises along the way. So just allow yourselves that. <laughs> Pat yourselves in the back. You survived and you had the best time. I mean, I wouldn't exchange those moments for anything in the world because… I can say I've done it. I don't know about you guys. Maybe you should. <laughs> Affirmation. Oh my God. I don't know if you've kept yourself in your room all this time. I don't know if people have limited your world. I don't know if you've limited your world. I don't know if you've made excuses for yourself. I don't know if you haven't saved up enough. I don't know if you haven't kept enough money aside because you were busy spending on things that actually don't even matter. So invest in your time by yourself. If you're ready to take a trip on an adventure of a lifetime because it's going to be worth it. If you get lost, if you get scared… If you meet some scary people along the way, it's okay. Uh, make sure to be in touch with friends and family. Reconnect with people that you know in certain places. Because I'm sure they've invited you. Allow their invitations to take you to places you've never been to. Because the world is a beautiful place and there is so much to discover. Step out of your little box right now. Step out of your little room and discover the world. Let's all be like Dora. <laughs> Thank you.